Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I am very glad that you are joining me. But if you are a first time listener, why, 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 why are you jumping in at, oh, I don't know, episode 900 and something? Uh, C, number C, 200 something? I don't remember. I don't know. Um, but well, you, you should, go, you got to go back. You got to go back to the beginning and, and follow along very closely. And listen and make notes. Okay, the first word in this episode is clarify. C-L-A-R-I-F-Y. Clarify. Verb from the 14th century. One, to make, as a liquid, clear or pure, usually by freeing from suspended matter. Uh, So if there is a liquid and it's got a whole bunch of crap in there, you can clarify it to make it pure and clear. Number two, to free of confusion, as in, needs time to clarify his thoughts. I often need that. Clearly. Who? Uh, Number three, to make understandable, as in, clarify a subject. I try to be as clear as possible, but sometimes things need to be clarified, and I think a lot of people don't understand that they are not being very clear, and they, they they need to clarify. Sometimes... I have to clarify things for people because the person that they are talking to is thinking things in a different way and the the person talking is not being very clear. So I am the clarifier sometimes. I like doing that. I kind of like being that translator. Makes me feel good about myself. Uh, Okay, those were transitive. Now we have one intransitive definition to become clear. Clarification. You could pronounce that a couple of ways. Clarification is a noun, and clarifier is a noun. This is from Middle English. Clarifien from Anglo-French. Clarifier from the Latin. Clarificare, which is from the Latin. Clarus, which means clear. And there's more at the word clear. Next is, haha, it is clarinet. Clarinet, clarinet. Why is it called clarinet? I don't know. Noun from 1733. A single reed woodwind instrument having a cylindrical tube with a moderately flared bell and a usual range from D below middle C upward for three and a half half octaves. Clarinetist or clarinetist. uh, Okay, clarinetist with one T or two T's. That is a noun. That is the one playing the clarinet. Um, And then this is from the French clarinet, spelled with E-T-T-E, probably ultimately from Middle Latin clarion or clario, but it it does not say what that means, clario. Uh, So we'll never know why it is called a clarinet. There is a picture of a clarinet. It's very detailed. It is a very good picture. Because clarinets are basically black and white, and this is a black and white picture. It looks just like a clarinet. I played the clarinet for one year. One year, fourth grade, my first real instrument. I mean, I played the piano. When I took piano lessons when I was like four, five, six, something like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, in school, in band, the first instrument I played was a clarinet. And uh, the only reason I played it was so I could move on to the saxophone, which I did for like a decade. Um, but yeah, the clarinet is great. There are small clarinets, and there are big clarinets, and they have such a great sound. Should I play a clip of somebody playing a clarinet here? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. That's clarinet. Next is clarion. Clarion. First form noun from the 14th century. One, a medieval trumpet with clear, shrill tones. Clarion. Uh, Number two, the sound of or as if of a clarion. This probably couldn't be more different of an instrument than the clarinet. The clarinet and the clarion. Clarion. One is a trumpet. One is a, a woodwind instrument that has a very sort of like... I don't know, how would you describe the sound of a clarinet? It's kind of not muffled exactly, but it is. it feels very, like, like cozy. I don't know. I can't describe it. 
it can be very within itself. What is the right word? I can't think of it, but a, a trumpet is the opposite of that. Okay, um, any etymology for that? It's from the same etymology as clarinet. Middle Latin, clarion, clario, from the Latin clar claris. Um, I don't understand why. I mean, that one makes more sense because it's clear, shrill tones. The sound is clear, but the clarinet don't make no sense. Second form of clarion, adjective from 1801, brilliantly clear. Also, loud and clear. I, there are actually examples of both of those. So the example for brilliantly clear is her clarion top notes. And the example for loud and clear is a clarion call to action. It just means clear. Next is clarity. This is a noun from 1616. The quality or state of being clear. And the synonym is lucidity. It's a very similar etymology. Next is clarkia. Clarkia. So it's Clark with an I-A. Noun from 1827. Any of a genus of showy annual herbs of the evening primrose family that are native to western North America and southwestern South America. Uh, by the way, the genus name is also Clarkia with a capital C. And this is from William Clark. Doesn't say who he was, what he did, when he lived, although somewhere around 1827, I guess. That's a Clarkia. Next is Clark's Nutcracker. Two words with a capital C. Uh, this is a noun from 1924. A grayish white bird of Western North America with black and white wings and tail. And the scientific name is Nucifraga Columbiana. And, hey, look at this. The etymology says it is also from William Clark. Still doesn't say who this dude was. Um, so he named a bird and he also named an herb. And they were, wait a minute. They were 100 years apart? 100, almost 100 years apart? Uh, how did this happen? Is it a different William Clark? What's going on here? Somebody tell me. Next is the word claro. C-L-A-R-O. Noun from 1889. A light-colored, usually mild cigar. Uh, this is Spanish. Claro, which means light, from the Latin clarus. It is a claro cigar. Next is clary sage. C-L-A-R-Y. Second word, sage. Noun from the 14th century. An aromatic mint of southern Europe that is widely cultivated, especially as an ornamental, called also just clary. Um, this is from Middle English clary, from Anglo-French sclary, from the Middle Latin scleria. Next is the word clash, C-L-A-S-H, another word that is a sound. This is the first form verb from circa 1500, starting with intransitive. One, to make a clash, as in symbols clashed. Two, to come into conflict, as in where ignorant armies clash by night. That is a quote from Matthew Arnold where ignorant armies clashed by night. Why were they ignorant? Because they didn't know where the other one was, and then they clashed. We have more to this definition. Also, to be incompatible, as in, the colors clashed. Uh, and then the transitive definition just says, to cause, to clash. So that would be symbols, or you could make colors clash. Clasher is a noun. Second form of clash is a noun from 1513. One, a noisy, usually metallic sound of collision. Two, a, a hostile encounter. Synonym is skirmish. Two, b, a sharp conflict, as in a clash of opinions. That happens a lot. Clasp is next. I don't know if that would be a sound, but it could be a sound, a clasp. First form, noun from the 14th century, 1a, a device, as a hook, for holding objects or parts together. 1b, a device, as a bar, 
attached to a military medal to indicate an additional award of the medal of the medal or the action or service for which it was awarded. Number two, a holding or enveloping with or as if with the hands or arms. Let's clasp. That's like a hug. What was that other one that we had? I don't remember. Clap? No. I don't know. 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 Okay, second form of clasp is a verb from the 14th century. It is just transitive. One, to fasten with or as if with a clasp, as in a robe clasped with a brooch. Two, to enclose and hold with the arms, specifically the synonym embrace. Three, to seize with or as if with the hand, and the synonym is grasp. You can grasp it or you can clasp it with your hand. Next is Clasper. Clasper the Friendly Ghost. Noun from circa 1847. That was a joke because it's not Clasper, it's Casper. I don't want to confuse you. Um, Okay, so... Hmm. All right. Um, The main definition and then there's an A and a B. So it is Clasper is a male copulatory structure. A, one of a pair of external anal processes of an insect that are used to grasp a female. Ah, that's why it's called a a clasper. And then B, one of a pair of organs that are extensions of the pelvic fins of cartilaginous fishes. So claspers, even though it is a male copulatory structure, it is not in the human. I don't think any human males have claspers. I bet you there are some human males out there that wish they had claspers, but no, you don't, and you can't. It's not allowed. And then our last word for this episode is clasp knife. Two words, clasp and knife. Noun from 1734. The synonym is pocket knife, one word, especially a large one-bladed folding knife having a catch to hold the blade open. It is a clasp knife. There's a clasp to hold the knife. All right, so the words today were clarify, clarinet, clarion, clarity, clarkia, Clark's nutcracker, claro, clary, sage, clash, clasp, clasper, clasp, knife. Hmm. Well, I do like clarify and clarity. Hmm. But I also like clarinet, but I can post a picture of a clarinet. I don't think I can post a picture of clarity or clarify i shall pick clarity as the word of the episode clarity how can i be more no that that form doesn't work clarity clarity we need some clarity about this thing we need clarity i i don't i don't really know how these songs happen um all right what are the holidays for today? It's the earliest day on which Somers Day can fall in Bermuda. Somers Day, S-O-M-E-R. Maybe it is summer, just they spell it differently. I don't know. It is in India, Mohun Bagan Day. In Romania, it is National Anthem Day. In Thailand, it is National Thai Language Day. Uh, I think we had this yesterday. In the Faroe Islands and Nordic countries, it is Olav Soka, or Alsok. Uh, that's the opening of the Logting session. Yep. And it is National Intern Day in America and Canada. In Peru, it is Armed Forces Day. In Moldova, it is Constitution Day. In Romania, it is National Anthem Day. In Norway, it is Olaf's Wake, or St. Olaf's Day. And... It is also, let's check this, it's national, or is it World, I think it's World Tiger Day. Yes, World Tiger Day. Fun holidays. We got we got some an interesting group of fun holidays today. National Lipstick Day, National Lasagna Day, National Chili Dog Day, and National Chicken Wing Day. You probably don't want to put on some lipstick before you eat any of these things because it's just going to get all messy and nobody wants that. But when you're done eating those, then you can put on some lipsticks. Lipsticks? Lipstick. 
It's just singular. Although if you want to put two colors on, you could do that. That would be lipsticks. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to eat any of those things, even vegan version. That's a lot. Maybe a chili dog. I could do that. All right. That's all for today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. All right. So, uh, normally I stop recording after four episodes because my voice gets raw and that's a lot of time. Uh, but I only recorded three episodes yesterday, so I want to record five episodes today. So I will see. We'll see how my voice holds up. Um, yeah. All right. So the first word in this episode, this might be a little bit of a long episode. It is the word class. C-L-A-S-S. First form noun from 1602. 1A, a body of students meeting regularly to study the same subject. 1B, the period during which such a body meets. There is a class in a class. Uh, And then 1C, a course of instruction. 1D, a body of students or alumni whose year of graduation is the same. So many ways to use this word. Hey, look at this. There's way more ways that you can use this word. 2A, A group sharing the same economic or social status, as in the working class. They are the ones who work. The the other ones, they don't work? Mm, That's debatable. To be social rank, especially high social rank. To see high quality. Synonym is elegance, as in a hotel with class. Three. A group, set, or kind sharing common attributes as 3A, a major category in biological taxonomy ranking above the order and below the phylum or division. I used to have all those things memorized, but I don't remember. I know there's some mnemonic that you can use, but so class, no. So uh, above order, below phylum, so phylum, class, order, yeah. Um, 3B, a collection of adjacent and discrete or continuous values of a random variable. 3C, we have the 21 definition, the 21st definition for the word set, S-E-T. Number four, a division or rating based on grade or quality. Five, the best of its kind, as in the class of the league. Six, a data type in object-oriented programming that consists of a group of objects with the same properties and behaviors and that is arranged in a hierarchy with other such data types. Compare to the word object. Class and object. I don't understand that one. All right, what does the etymology have to say from French? Classa, with an E. From the Latin, classis, which means Group called to military service, fleet. Wait, group called to military service, also fleet, also class. Perhaps uh, akin to the Latin calare, which means to call. And there's more at the word low. Low. Yeah. So now we have the second form of class. It's, It's so much shorter. It is a transitive verb from 1705. We just have the synonym classify. Next is class act, two words, noun from 1976, an example of outstanding quality or prestige. Class act. Oh, that's such a class act. Next is class action, noun from 1952, a legal action undertaken by one or more plaintiffs on behalf of themselves and all other persons having an identical interest in the alleged wrong. So this uh, typical example uh, is a company did something and then there was a whole bunch of people who were connected to that company in some way and they can be part of a class action suit and they might get like 30 cents if there's a lot of them. Uh, I may have been part of one of these. I don't remember. You know, sometimes you get the letters in the mail and you can either choose to be a part of it or not and whatever. I don't know. Uh, all right, next we have class conscious. Class conscious, two words with a hyphen. 
adjective from 1903, one, actively aware of one's common status with others in a particular economic or social level of society. I think I am class conscious. I think most people would be pretty class conscious. What, what, what would you have to be to be not class conscious? How can you be so unaware of your situation that you are not class conscious unless somebody is keeping you locked up in a room you clearly would have no idea uh, number two believing in class struggle class consciousness is a noun that's two words uh, clearly there are people who are not class conscious in the number two definition uh, they they are not aware that there are people who struggle because maybe they're not struggling, but hey, there's other people, and they have other ex they have other experiences of the world, uh, so maybe become a bit more class consciousness, C class conscious. Have some more class consciousness. There we go. All right. Next is the word classic, first form adjective from circa 1604. One a serving as a standard of excellence, of recognized value, as in classic literary works what makes them classic 1b synonyms are traditional and enduring as in classic designs 1c characterized by simple tailored lines in fashion year after year as in a classic suit i think i probably need a classic suit that i would probably wear once every five years number two of or relating to the ancient Greeks and Romans or their culture. And the synonym is classical. Classical. 3A. Historically memorable, as in a classic battle. 3B. Noted because of special literary or historical associations, as in Paris is the classic refuge of expatriates. Why? 4A. Synonyms are authentic and authoritative. 4B, synonym is typical, as in a classic example of chicanery. Also as in a classic error. Number five would be capitalized of or relating to the period of highest development of Mesoamerican and especially Mayan culture about AD 300 to 900. And that would be, uh, let's see, 1,000, why, why, sometimes it's so hard to do math, uh, about 1,700 years ago or 1,100 years ago in that span. So let's look at the etymology. It is from French, classique, from Latin, classicus, which means of the highest class of Roman citizens, also of the first rank. Uh, yeah, so many ways to use classic. That word, I do sometimes say, like, oh, that became an instant classic. I think some a lot of us say that. It's so good. That movie was so good, it became an instant classic. People will be talking about it for decades. Next is the second form of classic, noun from 1711. One, a literary work of ancient Greece or Rome. Two, a, a work of enduring excellence. Also, its author. Two, b, an authoritative source. Three, a typical or perfect example. Four, a traditional event, as in a football classic. Do I have anything else to say about classics? I didn't really study the classics. I took two years of Latin. That would be the closest that I got. I know some people study both the classic languages, the classics books. Um, but then what do you do? What do you do with that? I don't know. Hey, we're on our last word. It is classical. C-L-A-S-S-I-C-A-L. -S -S classical. Adjective from 1599. One, synonyms are standard and classic. 2A, of or relating to the ancient Greek and Roman world and especially to its literature, art, architecture, or ideals. As in, classical civilization. I mean, I do find that fascinating, but I don't got the time to study that. I have to read the dictionary. To be versed in the classics, as in a classical scholar. 3A, of or relating to music of the late 18th 
and early 19th centuries characterized by an emphasis on balance, clarity, and moderation. Futurama has a great joke. Ooh, it must have been season one uh, where they're, they're in somebody's apartment and I think there's rap or hip hop or playing. It might even be Baby Got Back. I don't remember. I picked up my life exactly where I left off a thousand years ago. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's eight o'clock. Time to get busy. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. You can't just sit here in the dark listening to classical music. All right, 3B of relating to or being music in the educated European tradition that includes such forms as art song, chamber music, opera, and symphony as distinguished from folk or popular music or jazz. I really need to listen to more classical music. I really do like it. I just don't listen to it. I didn't study it. I know a tiny little fraction of classical music composers and music, but it's so good. I like all of it. All right, 4A, synonyms are authoritative and traditional. 4B1, of or relating to a form or system considered of first significance in earlier times, as in classical Mendelian genetics. I think that was, that was the guy who was studying genetics in peas, right? That's, that's the, where we learned all about genetics. 4B2, not involving relativity wave mechan mechanics or quantum theory, as in classical physics. It's the old school class classical ph physics. Speak good. Uh, 4C, conforming to a pattern or no, conforming to a pattern of usage sanctioned by a body of literature rather than by everyday speech. And 5 concerned with or giving instruction in the humanities, the fine arts, and the broad aspects of science, as in a classical curriculum. This episode became an instant classic. It's so classical. Uh, yeah, those were all the words. So we had class, class act, class action, class conscious, classic, and classical. Not a lot of words. Because there were so many ding-dang definitions for them. Um, I think... Hmm. I mean, I definitely liked classic and classical. But I think I'm going to pick class conscious as the word of the episode. Two words with a hyphen. I think that we need to be more class conscious. We just think about our own little bubble. And there are some people clearly who think a lot about helping out the other people. But, you know... There, there's people all over the place, all over the world, in all these different classes. And, uh, you know, we just need to be aware of that. And if there are people who are not doing as well as you, maybe you can go help them out. All right. Class conscious, class conscious, class conscious. If anybody wants to put, to, put, that, put these songs together and figure out, I think they're all exactly the same. I think there's very little difference in them. How can we do things different? Class conscious, class conscious. If I put in other words, that would help. If I figured out how to rhyme things, I could add more words. That would help. That would make it more interesting. I don't have the time for that. So in Morocco, it is Feast of the Throne. It is Independence Day in Vanuatu. Independence from the UK and France in 1980. It is International Day of Friendship. And then, relatedly, in Paraguay, it is Dia del Amigo. In South Sudan, it is Martyr's Day. It is World Day Against Trafficking in Persons. Yes, this is very good. We don't need to be trafficking the, pe the peoples, the persons. Um, in Latin America, it is both Tax Day and Teacher Day. And then, do we have any fun holidays for July 30? In addition to International Day of Friendship, it is National Father-in-Law Day and National Cheesecake Day. I will say Happy Father-in-Law Day to my father-in-law. And then I encourage you to do the same if you have a father-in-law. And if you don't, that's okay. Uh, but yeah, I may have to get myself some cheesecake. Ooh, cheesecake. Will I share it with a friend? Because it, it's International Day of Friendship? 
Do any of my friends want to share a vegan cheesecake with me? No, I want it all for myself. All right, we're going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is the end of page 228. It is also the end of July 2021. And it is also the end of this recording session for me today because I have recorded five episodes and my voice is getting very raw and it's not no fun. It's not no fun, but let's read them. Re- read the words. Let's read the words. But we can also say, I would really love it if you reviewed this podcast. I really, really want those reviews. I'm trying to collect them all. And uh, if you want to email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com. If you want to message me, follow me, look at what I post on Twitter and Instagram, it is at dictionarypod. If you want to leave me a voicemail, I may put it in an episode. Um, you know, it might be like a month later, but that's okay. Um, that is, uh, the phone number is in the show notes. So go, go do some hunting for that. All right. If you're not looking in the show notes, I'm trying to start putting more, more information in there. Maybe it might be one link. It might be something I screwed up. It might be something fun. I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm figuring it out. Um, all right. The first word is classical conditioning. Classical conditioning. Is that when you put conditioner in your hair that's in the old school way with the old school conditioner the classical i don't know anyway it's two words noun from 1949 conditioning in which the conditioned stimulus is paired with and precedes the unconditioned stimulus until the conditioned stimulus alone is sufficient to elicit the response Okay, so we have some more information to tell you. There are examples. So the conditioned stimulus could possibly be the sound of a bell. The unconditioned stimulus could be the sight of food. And the response could be the salivation of a dog. And we are also going to compare this to the synonym, I guess, or maybe it would be the opposite, operant conditioning. So I'm going to reread that with the examples that they put in so it makes a little bit more sense. But obviously, this is talking about um, Pavlov's dogs. Conditioning in which the sound of a bell is paired with and precedes the sight of food until the sound of a bell alone is sufficient to to elicit the salivation in a dog. Does that make more sense? I hope it does. You're welcome. Okay, moving on to classicality. This is a noun from 1819. One, the quality or state of being classic. Two, classical scholarship. Next is classically. You can hear my voice going. Classically, adverb from 1772. One, in a class or classical manner, as in classically exact forms of the dance. Also as in classically trained. 2a in classic or traditional circumstances synonym is typically as in classically the whole fish is stuffed typically you would stuff the whole fish not just a part of the fish that would be odd it's the whole fish Uh, 2b as a classic example that's the definition as a classic example as in classically bad writing Next is classicism. Classicism, noun from 1830, 1A. The principles or style embodied in the literature, art, or architecture of ancient Greece and Rome. 1B, classical scholarship. 1C, a classical idiom or expression. What would that be? A classical idiom or expression. Uh... Two birds in the hand is worth one in the bush. Is that what they say? I don't know. That's the first thing I could think of. Don't beat a dead horse. Uh, yeah. Number two, adherence to traditional standards that are universally and enduringly valid. And the examples of these traditional standards would be simplicity, restraint, and proportion. Adherence to traditional standards like simplicity, restraint, and proportion 
that are universally and enduringly valid. Next is classicist. Classicist, noun from 1830. One, an advocate or follower of classicism. Two, a classical scholar. Classicist, no, classicistic. Classicistic is an adjective. Uh, yeah. Next is classicize. Verb from 1854, to make classic or classical. That was transitive. Now we've got intransitive, to follow classic style. Um, I just uh, was having a short little conversation with somebody on Twitter uh, right after I recorded the last episode. They said, let's see, their their Twitter handle, do they want me to say it? Eh, if they want me to, I could, they can let me know. But anyway... Um, they, uh, they said that they're going to listen again with their Word Nerd Classics major daughter. So their daughter is majoring in the classics, and, uh, and she's a word nerd. Uh, and so, you know, her daughter would be a possibly a classicist, or maybe she will become a classicist, a classical scholar. And uh, if, you want, if you want me to say who you are on Twitter, let me know, and maybe I will put that in the show notes later. Um, okay, you know, people can be... You, you want to respect their privacy. If they want, that's fine. That's Either way, it's fine. Okay. I think we did classicize. Now we are on classico. Adjective from 1968. Produced in a delimited area of Italy, known for its standards of quality, as in Chianti Classico. And this is Italian from the Latin classicus. Next is classification. Noun from 1790. One, the act or process of classifying. 2a, systematic arrangement in groups or categories according to established criteria, specifically the synonym taxonomy. 2b, synonyms are class and category. And uh, classificatory. Classificatory. <laughs> Or you could say classificatory. Uh, those are adjectives. That's such a fun word. Next is classified. Oh, sorry. I can't read this one because the information is classified. Uh, this is the first form adjective from 1889. One, divided into classes or placed in a class, as in classified ads. Is that why they're called the classified, the classified ads? Because they're divided into sections, into classes? I never even knew that. I never thought about that. Huh, they're, they've been classified into classes. Number two, withheld from general circulation for reasons of national security, as in classified information. Second form of classified is a noun from 1952, an advertisement grouped with others according to subject. And this is usually used in plural, the classifieds. Next is classifier, noun from 1819. One, one that classifies. Specifically, a machine for sorting out the constituents of a substance. And what might that substance be? It might be or, O-R-E. Two, a word or morpheme used with numerals or with nouns designated, designating countable or measurable objects. A word or a or in use of numerals or nouns designated. I don't know. I have to find an example of that. A classifier, word, or morphine. Morpheme, not morphine. Um, I kind of like to be a classifier. I kind of like sorting things into categories, and I don't know why, but that's sort of a fun task for me. It's just like the task of alphabetizing my movies or cds or something next is classify verb from 1799 one to arrange in classes as in classifying books according to subject matter two to assign as a document to a category classifiable is an adjective next is class interval two words Noun from 1929. Let's see. There's two things here. The first is the 3B definition for the word class. 
uh, let's, I could, I've got that right here. I've got it handy. That is uh, a collection of adjacent and discrete or continuous values of a random variable. So that is class interval, but then also it's numerical width. Width. W-I-D-T-H. The width. All right, next is classis. C-L-A-S-S-I-S. Classis. Noun from 1593. One a governing body in some reformed churches uh, corresponding to a presbytery. And the example of the reformed churches are in the former reformed church in the U.S. And then number two, the district governed by a classis. Next is classism. Classism. Class with an ism. Noun from 1842 prejudice or discrimination based on class and classist is an adjective i don't like this i just don't like this i don't think you should be prejudiced or discriminatory based on the class that somebody is in because a lot of times it's not even they don't have a choice in that matter um i mean we're not going to go down that road right now that's just what i got to say Next is classless, classless, adjective from 1878. One, belonging to no particular social class. How is that even possible? I don't know. Number two, free from distinctions of social class, as in a classless society. Three, synonyms are crass and boorish, as in classless behavior. Yeah, the word class tends to mean um, or often means something that's very high end and fancy. So if you are classless, you are crash and boorish. And I kind of like that. I like to be classless every once in a while, but sometimes I like to have class. That's fun, too. You can be all over the place if you want. Uh, Okay, and then classlessness is a noun. Next is classmate. One word, noun from 1713, a member of the same class in a school or college. It it could be the class that you're in. There could be 20 or 30 people in the class. It could be your whole grade. If there's, you know, 100 people or 1,000 people, they're all your classmates. Um, And then finally, we have classroom, noun from 1811, a place where classes meet. Depends on the class. Depends on the subject, depends on the school, depends on the grade, depends on how many people in there. It's going to be a different room, but it's always a classroom. All right, so the words today were classical conditioning, classicality, classically, classicism, classicist, classicize, classico, classification, classified, classifier, classify, class interval, classis, classism, classless, classmate, and classroom. I feel like my eyes don't even know what is going on because there was so much of the same letters. Um, I think I shall just pick classical conditioning because uh, it's just a fascinating subject that, you know, you can train dogs and humans and other things with this. Uh, Obviously, it's relatively easy to train a dog, but, you know, maybe I should try some classical conditioning on my cats i should have done that when they were young but i didn't i think they could they classically conditioned me and i didn't even know it um yeah classical conditioning is the process where you train something what are the holidays for today in malaysia it is warrior's day in poland it is treasury day In Haryana and Punjab, India, it is Martyrdom Day of Shahid Udham Singh. In Hawaii, it is Kahai Hawaii Day. Uh, That is Sovereignty Restoration Day. In, let's see, sitting of the High Court of Justice of England, it is the end of the Trinity term. In Baha'i, it is the earliest day on on which the Feast of Kamal can fall. That is also called Perfection. And let's look at this page. It is Food Day in Canada. In Australia, it is National Tree Day. And what are the fun holidays? We got four of them. It is World Ranger Day. 
It is National Mutt Day. Celebrate your mutt. Uh, if you've got a, a dog that is all, all different kinds of breeds all together, I think they're the most interesting dogs. Um, it's National Avocado Day. I try to eat maybe a half avocado most days. It's it's good. You, you mix it in with some other stuff and it tastes good and and it's healthy for you. Uh, yeah, let's have some avocados. And finally, it is national. No, it's just Harry Potter's birthday. July 31st is Harry Potter's birthday. If you didn't know that, uh, let's see if I am remembering correctly. I believe according to the books, uh, Harry Potter was would have been born if he were a real person in 1980. I believe that is the timeline of all of it. I could be totally off on that, but I think I remember hearing somewhere that he would have been born in 1980, which means he's about a month older than me. Um, yeah, man, my niece is so into Harry Potter. I mean, I'm sure she knows his birthday is July 31st. Uh, so we'll have to have a little chat about Harry Potter on today. We'll, we'll celebrate Harry Potter's birthday. All right. Uh, we have finished page 228. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Adios. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. We've made it to August. August 1st is today. We've also made it to page 229. That's much more important. All right. Well, let's just talk about the words, shall we? The first word is classy. C-L-A-S-S-Y. I am so classy. This is an adjective from 1891, having or showing class. As A, the synonyms are elegant and stylish, as in a classy clientele. B, having or reflecting high standards of personal behavior, as in a classy guy, also as in a classy gesture. What would a classy gesture be? It, really? All right. And then C. Uh, admirably, admirably skillful and graceful, as in a classy outfielder. <laughs> now I just want to see a, a guy out in right field or a girl, doesn't matter, but wearing something super classy. Maybe a top hat, maybe a gown, a tux, some fancy shoes. That would be a great sight. Classiness is a noun. How much classiness do you have? Next is classed, C-L-A-S-T. Noun from 1952. A fragment of rock is called a classed. So if you are uh, chipping away at a rock with a, a, a hammer or another rock or something to make an arrowhead, maybe all the little pieces that come off would be called clasts, I guess. Um... Where did we go? Okay, so this is from the Greek klastos, which means broken, from clan, which means to break, uh, which is odd because in English, the word clan is a group of people that have probably not been broken. Um, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Um, perhaps akin to the Latin clades, which means disaster. Okay, next is clastic, adjective from 1877 made up of fragments of pre-existing rocks, as in a clastic sediment. So when you're hearing some, uh, some, some geologists talk about clastic sediments, now you know what they're talking about. Lots of fragments of pre-existing rocks. All right, clastic is a noun. Next is clothrate. 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 C-L-A-T-H-R-A-T-E. Clothrate. Adjective from 1906, relating to or being a compound formed by the inclusion of molecules of one kind in cavities of the crystal lattice of another. I didn't understand that. Clathrate is also a noun. What does the etymology say? From Latin, clathratus, which is furnished with a lattice. Uh, from clathri, which is the plural, which is lattice. From Gleek, Greek, <laughs> Gleek. Uh, Greek kalithron, which means bar, from kleyin, which means to close. And there's more at the word clavicle. Clavicle, that'll be in the next episode. Next is clatter. Oh, what is the matter? There was such a clatter. This is the first form verb from the 13th century, starting with intransitive. One, 
to make a rattling sound, as in the dishes clattered on the shelf. Uh, number two, to talk noisily or rapidly. Three, to move or go with a clatter, as in clattered down the stairs. <laughs> I, I just imagine if you're clattering down the stairs, you're probably falling, and that's not good. I just imagine Homer clattering down the stairs in The Simpsons. All right, now we have transitive, to cause, to clatter. Clatterer is a noun. Clatteringly is an adverb. This is from, eh, it's not that interesting. Second form of clatter, noun from the 14th century. One, a rattling sound, as of hard bodies striking together. As in, the clatter of pots and pans. So the pots and pans are clattering, and the noise they make is a clatter. Number two, the synonym is commotion, as in, the midday clatter of the business district. Three, noisy chatter, is that's the definition. Noisy chatter is clatter. Clattery is an adjective. Next is claudication. Claudication, C-L-A-U-D-I-C-A-T-I-O-N, noun from the 15th century, the quality or state of being lame, and the synonym is limping. I think lame might not be a word that really is used all that much anymore, but yeah. Um, let's see, so this is from the Latin claudicare, uh, which means to limp, uh, which is from claudus, which means lame. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see. When I had my foot in in uh, injury, uh, I was in a state of claudication, I guess, because I was limping around. Next is clausal, C L A U S A L, adjective from 1904, relating to or the nature of a clause. That is our next word. Clause is a noun from the 13th century. One. A group of words containing a subject and predicate and functioning as a member of a complex or compound sentence. You'd think that I would know more about grammar and these words and what things are. I mean, I know the basics. I know the, the subject of a sentence and stuff, but I don't know. I get, I get confused when it gets to this level. Uh, okay, well, let's read number two. A separate section of a discourse of writing. Specifically, a distinct article in a formal document. This is from Middle Latin clausa, which is close of a rhetorical period. Mm, that is the, that's the feminine of clausus, which is from the verb claudere, which means to close. And there's more at the word close. Next is claustral. Claustral. C-L-A-U-S-T-R-A-L. Adjective from the 15th century, and we have the synonym cloistral, cloistral, C-L-O-I-S-T-R-A-L. Um, but it does have some etymology. Uh, let's see, from Middle Latin claustrum, which means cloister, uh, which is Latin, means bar or bolt or confining space. Uh, yeah. Well, speaking of confining spaces, our next word, I'm sure this is related, it is claustrophobia, C-L-A-U-S-T-R-O-P-H-O-B-I-A. -A. It's being afraid of Santa Claus. No, this is claustrophobia, noun from 1879, abnormal dread of being in closed or narrow spaces. Claustrophobe is a noun. Um, the etymology isn't very interesting other than it's from the Latin word claustrum, which I'm sure will... Oh, yes, we will learn about the word... We will learn about the word claustrum soon. Claustrophobia, this is a real thing. People get very scared. Um, even if it's not a particularly tight space, uh, people can still get scared. Um, just the just the, the, the idea that they might not be able to get out of the space. Um, but then, yeah, obviously, if you're in, like, a very small space, if you're, for some reason, in a closet or an elevator that stops working... People who, who have claustrophobia get very scared. So, you know, you can maybe go to therapy to work on that. I think the closest that I have come to any sort of claustrophobia is, uh, for, like, when, I'm, when I was a kid, if you're, like, got your elbow in your sleeve for some reason, I don't know if it's, like, you're just messing around trying to be silly or if it was an accident, and, like, 
if I get my arm stuck in a position in a place like in a shirt or something and I can't move it, then I start to freak out. That's that's where I freak out. Uh, although I'm sure if I were in like a coffin and I was alive, I would probably have some claustrophobia. Not going to lie. All right. Sp speaking of claustrophobic, that's the next word. Adjective from circa 1889. One affected with or inclined to claustrophobia. I am claustrophobic. Number two, including or suggesting claustrophobia. Claustrophob... Cla how do you say this word? Claustrophobically. That's an adverb. Claustrophobically. What? Where would you use that word? Claustrophobically. All right. Next is, here we go, with claustrum. Claustrum, claustrum, noun from 1848. The one of the four basal ganglia in each cerebral hemisphere that consists of a thin lamina of gray matter separated from the lenticular nucleus by a layer of white matter. All right, so the claustrum is a thing in the brain. And assuming it's related to claustrophobia, I am going to assume, I'm extra assuming, that then something happens with those four basal ganglia when you are claustrophobic. Uh, but I could be way off track. Because uh, there's got to be a reason that they use the word claustrum to create claustrophobia. Why else, why else would they have done that? Although that's the Latin version and the English version might be different. I don't know. Let's move on to clavate. Clavate. I think it's clavate. Adver no adjective from 1813. Thickened near the distal end. And then also club shaped. Thickened, so the distal end would be probably just the end that is the end. And then club shaped. Um, the first thing that I can think of is somebody uh, who, um, an amputee, or somebody maybe who was born without part of a limb. Uh, it's possible that the end of that could be sort of club shaped, so that would be clavate. Uh, this is from Latin clava, which means club from clavus, which means a nail or a knot in a wood. Knot in wood, like a, the K-N-O-T. How that's related, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Next is uh, clave, first form. It is the past form of cleave. Uh, cleave will be in a few episodes. Um, second form of clave, you would actually, you could pronounce it clave, or you could pronounce it clave, clave or clave noun from 1928 uh, and i think clave is the more appropriate way to pronounce this one of a pair of cylindrical hardwood hardwood sticks that are used as a percussion instrument uh, this is american spanish from spanish which means keystone or clef uh, from the latin clavis or clavis um, so it's the sticks I, I guess I thought it was something else. Maybe I'll post a picture of this clave, and maybe if I'm feeling so inspired, I will uh, add in some music here of somebody playing clave. And our last word is claver, C-L-A-V-E-R. Intransitive verb from circa 1605. It is chiefly Scottish, and the synonyms are Parate, P-R-A-T-E, and gossip. So if you are gossiping around, you might be a claver. Uh, claver is also, so that, so the this is the intransitive verb, but then also claver is a noun. So you could be a claver who is claving. Uh, again, that is chiefly Scottish. Claver, noun, chiefly Scottish. The origin is unknown. So the words today were classy, clast, clastic, clathrate, clatter, Claudication, clausal, clause, claustral, claustrophobia, claustrophobic, claustrum, clavate, clave, clave, and claver. Oop, I had a little burp. Um, what would I like to pick as the word of the episode? I, I think I might just pick claustrophobia because it's a fun word to say. Um... I hate it when I'm in an elevator and it stops all of a sudden and I get that claustrophobia. All right, now is the time that we talk about the holidays. In Lebanon, it is Armed Forces Day. It's also Armed Forces Day in China. 
in Azerbaijan. It is Azerba Azerbaijani Language and Alphabet Day. I don't know anything about their language and alphabet. It is a celebration of the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833, which ended slavery in the British Empire. And then there's a few things related to that. Emancipation Day in Barbados, Bermuda, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Vincent, uh, the Grenadines, Trinidad, and Tobago. Lots of Emancipation Days. Is, is. Uh, and then earliest day on which Emancipation Day can fall in Anguilla, the Bahamas, and British Virgin Islands. And then also the earliest day on which Caribana can fall in Toronto. And I guess that's related as well. So yes, those were all... Um, Connected to the British Empire. Uh, let's see. Earliest day since today is August 1st. There's a number of these. Earliest day on which August bank holiday can fall in Ireland. Earliest day for civic holiday in Canada. Earliest day for commerce day in Iceland. Earliest day for constitution day in the Cook Islands. Earliest day for farmer's day in Zambia. Earliest day for international beer day. Uh, that's all over the place. Um, whether or not it is also actually on this day this year, I don't know. It's the earliest day for Friendship Day, and actually I believe it is actually Friendship Day today that is in the U.S. In Barbados, it is the earliest day for Kadu Kadument Day. It's the earliest day for Labor Day in Samoa. We are done with the earliest day thing. Now it's Minden Day in the U.K. In, um, let's see, National Day... Independence of Benin from France. So in Benin, they are celebrating National Day. It's also National Day in Switzerland. It is the official birthday and coronation of the King of Tonga. Where do you think that is happening? That's in Tonga. In the, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, it's Parents' Day. In Colorado, it is Statehood Day. In Switzerland, it is Swiss National Day. Uh, the beginning of autumn observances in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh my God, it's August 1st. We're already celebrating autumn. All right, let's do it. Uh, but then also spring observances in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, Gales, Ireland, Scotland, Neopagans. Uh, they are celebrating Lugnasad. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, England, Scotland. The Neopagans are also celebrating Lamas. In Ecuador and Peru, they are celebrating Pachamama Raimi. Oh, there's still some more. In Burgess Park, London, England, it is the first day of Carnival del Pueblo. In Cambodia and Laos and Vietnam, they are celebrating Victoria Day. No, 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 no. Victory Day. I read it wrong. In Yorkshire, England, it is Yorkshire Day. It is World Scout Scarf Day. Scout Scarf Day? Generic term for special days observed by members of the scouting movement throughout the year. All right. And let's just quickly check this site to see if it has anything new. I think we read all of those. Yeah, probably. Oh, um, in India, it is World Breastfeeding Week. Um, in Spain, Viking Pilgrimage. In Russia, Railway Workers Day. Um, I don't know if these are in the fun holidays, so I'll just read them here. In Canada and the U.S., it is National Sister Day. So if you have a sister, it's it's her day. And, and I don't know, send her to a spa, do something that you'll like. Um, in Canada and the U.K. and the U.S., it is National Girlfriend Day. So if you got a girlfriend, be nice to your girlfriend. Hopefully, your girlfriend and your sister are not the same person. All right, I got a new page for... Um, the more fun holidays. Uh, is, I think it has a lot more, and we always have to know more fun holidays. Um, August 1st, oh, you know what? Let's let's go to this page and talk about the months. What, what months is it? Back to school month. I mean, if you're going back to school in the early August, I don't know, that's a problem. But, uh, you know, usually kids go back to school at the end of August, so I guess that's why that makes sense. It is National Breastfeeding Month. But if you got a kid and you're breastfeeding your kid, maybe you should do it all year round, not just this month. It's National Eye Exam Month. I think I'm actually going to go get an eye exam pretty soon. Maybe it'll be in August. Uh, maybe because it's National Eye Exam Month, they'll be giving me a deal. It is also National Immunization Awareness Month. That's probably because the kids have to go back to school and they got to get their immunizations. 
and what fun holidays are on today, August 1st. American Family Day. This is, I don't know, between the picture and the name, I'm not really liking this. It's just a very sort of upper middle class, maybe even higher than that. Just a white family. Just a, a mom and a dad and a boy and a girl, and they're very white, and it's American Family Day. I don't know about that one. It's Friendship Day. It's Homemade Pie Day. It's International Child Free Day. Does that mean you have to get rid of your kids today? Uh, oh, no. I brought up an ad. Uh, what is this? It's also called Non-Parents Day. Hey, that's me. So this is the day that I can celebrate. Um, it is International Forgiveness Day. It's a uh, Lamas. That was what we talked about before. It's um, uh, uh, it's uh, autumn, celebrating autumn. Uh, Lugnadash uh, National Doll Day. Like, there's a picture of, of Barbies, so you can play with your dolls. National Girlfriend's Day, National Kids Day, which is funny because it's also non-kids day. It's National Minority Donor Awareness Day. I think that sounds pretty good. N National Raspberry Cream Pie Day. That's very specific. It is Planner Day. Yeah, I told you this page has way more things. Also, it is the beginning of a month, so there's usually a lot of stuff. Play Ball Day. That's for baseball. It is Psychic Day. Interestingly... It's Respect for Parents Day, and it shows the same picture that they used for American Family Day. Re okay. It is Rounds Resounding Day. I don't know what that is. It shows a picture of a woman singing. Scout Scarf Day. Sisters Day. Spider-Man Day. Go celebrate Spider-Man. It is Woman Astronomers Day. That's good. World Lung Cancer Day. World Wide Web Day. Go be on the internet today. It is Yorkshire Day. Oh my god, there were so many things. But lastly, we have to check this page to see if there's anything that got missed. Probably not. Mm, Dogist first. Universal birthday for shelter dogs. I like that. And on that note, we're going to end this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Hello, word nerds. Hello, word nerds. Listen to me talk about the dictionary. The first word in this episode is clavichord. C-L-A-V-I-C-H-O-R-D. Noun from the 15th century. An early keyboard instrument having strings struck by tangents attached directly to the key ends. Let's post a picture. Clavichordist is a noun. This is from uh, the Middle Latin clavicordium, which is from the Latin clavis or clavis, which means key, plus corda, which means string. And there's more at the word chord. So it's key string. The string is attached to the key. It makes sense. Next is clavicle. C-L-A-V-I-C-L-E. Noun from 1617. A bone of the vertebrate pectoral girdle, typically serving to link the scapula and sternum, called also collarbone. We all know it as the collarbone. Um, if you don't know what half of those words mean, you will have no idea what this thing is. The vertebrate pectoral girdle, typically serving the link to the scapula and the sternum. Uh, clavicular is an adjective. This bone is the the one that is uh, supposedly the easiest to break. Now, don't go around breaking people's clavicles, um, but it takes the least amount of pressure uh, to break that bone. Uh, my dad told me a story that when he was a kid, I don't know, elementary school, junior high, around there, he was, I don't know, if he was in a fight or if he was just messing around with a kid, maybe they were wrestling or something, and... Uh, he accidentally broke the other kid's clavicle, and he felt really bad about that. Uh, okay, so the etymology for this is from the French clavicule, from New Latin clavicula, uh, from the Latin diminutive of the Latin clavis, or clavis, akin to the Greek cleed, or cleis, which means key, or clean, which means to close. Uh, so how this is related to the word key I'm not sure. It is the key into your sternum. Uh, next is, you could pronounce this a few ways, clavier, clavier, 
or clavier. Clavier, clavier. Let's let's figure out how we want to say this. Um, it is a noun from 1694. I'll, I'll because it's the first one. I'll say clavier. Number one, the keyboard of a musical instrument. So is the keyboard of a piano a clavier? That has a specific name. Uh, number two, an early keyboard instrument is a clavier. Um, clavier, clavierist is a noun. Claveristic, cleveristic, or claveristic. Those are adjectives. Um, this is from the old French, or it is an old French word that means key bearer. So the one who the, the, the section that holds the keys is the key bearer. So that is why it is a clavier. That is very interesting. Next is claw. I'll put in a quick clip uh, here of a They Might Be Giant song called Mr. Claw, although I think it's spelled with a K. A, a claw is a claw. This is the first form noun from before the 12th century. Number one, a sharp, usually slender and curved nail on the toe of an animal. If I let my toenails grow, I get claws. Two, any of various sharp, curved processes, especially at the end of a limb, as of an insect. Also, a limb ending in such a process. Why do they call it a process? Three, one of the pincher-like organs or pincer-like organs terminating some limbs of various arthropods as a lobster or scorpion. Also hermit crabs. And then the word terminating in there, it just means like that's the end of it. It's the thing that is the end of of some limbs. There's a claw. Number four, something that resembles a claw, specifically the forked end of a tool as a hammer. Uh, so the so the uh, other end of a hammer, you'd call that a claw? All right, I could see that. Clawed is an adjective. Claw-like is an adjective. Uh, let's see, this is from Old English clawu, C-L-A-W-U, which means hoof or claw, akin to the Old Norse clo, which means claw, and probably to the Old English Cleowin, which means ball. And there's more at the word clew. C-L-E-W. Second form of claw, verb from before the 12th century, uh, starting with transitive. To rake, seize, dig, or progress. Progress with or as if with claws. And then intransitive, to scrape, scratch, dig, or pull with or as if with claws. I really like both of those definitions because they had so many action words in each of them. Next is claw back, two words, verb from 1953. It is just transitive and it is chiefly British. To get back as money by strenuous or forceful means as taxation. And then claw back is a noun. Next is claw foot, two words with a hyphen, noun from 1792. A foot in the shape of a claw. And the example of where this foot is, it's not at the bottom of your leg. It is as on a bathtub or piece of furniture. Typically, it would be, yeah, a tub or a uh, maybe a couch or a chair could have a claw foot. I think it is so many people's dreams to have a claw foot tub. So maybe someday we'll have a claw foot tub. Uh, Next is claw hammer. One word. And I have to specify that because next is claw hammer with two words. So here we go with clamor. Clamor. Adjective from 1964 of relating to or being a style of banjo playing using the thumb and one or more fingers picking or strumming in a downward direction. Claw hammer. Um, Yeah, your hand is probably in the shape of a claw. And now claw hammer two words. This is a noun from circa 1969. One, a hammer with one end of the head forked by pulling or for pulling out nails. That's what that's for. You got to pull out the nails sometimes. If you made a mistake, 
You need the claw on the hammer. And then number two, the synonym is tailcoat. Uh, so interesting. Yeah, if I think about a, a tux jacket, it's got tails, and those are in the shape of the back end of a hammer, the claw part. So do they call that type of hammer or the back part of a hammer, they call that a tailcoat? And I would call it coattails. Hmm. All right, let's read the last word. It is clay, C-L-A-Y, noun from before the 12th century, 1A. This is long. An earthy material that is plastic when moist, but hard when fired, that is composed mainly of fine particles of hydrous aluminum silicates and other minerals, and that is used for brick, tile, and pottery. Specifically, soil composed chiefly of this material having particles less than a specified size. You can do so much with clay. 1B, synonyms are earth and mud. 2A, a substance that resembles clay in plasticity and is used for modeling. So many clays, different colors, different reasons to use them. I don't play with it as much. I, I have played with it a bit. I took a ceramics class in high school. I took some ceramics classes when I was younger. I made some crappy things. And it was fun. Uh, my niece is getting into clay. She's making all these miniatures out of different colored clay. And then you can fire them and make it hard and you can use them. And uh, I'm very impressed with what she's making. And she's only 11 and I can't wait to see what she makes as she grows up. To B, the human body as distinguished from the spirit. They call that clay? All right. I'll take it. It feels like clay. It's very plastic. It's mo it's modelable. It moves around more than I would like. To C, fundamental nature or character, as in the common clay. Three synonyms are clay. Oh, oh it's just clay court. Uh, so I think tennis sometimes is played on a clay court. Clayy, C-L-A-Y-E-Y, -E is an adjective. Clayish is an adjective. And clay-like is an adjective. This is from the Old English Klaeg, C-L-A-E-G, that is akin to the Old High German Kliwa, which means bran, like you gotta eat your bran, uh, from the Latin gluten, which means glue, and from Middle Greek glia, which probably also means glue. Uh, all right, so the, the words today were clavichord, clavicle, clavier, claw, Claw back, claw foot, claw hammer, claw hammer, and clay. Um, I think I will pick the verb of claw as the word of the episode. To rake, seize, dig, or progress with, or as if with claws. To scrape, scratch, dig, or pull with, or as if with claws. Let's read the holidays. That is not where I meant to be. Uh, today is August 2nd. In Azerbaijan, it is day of Azerbaijani cinema. I don't know any cinema from Azerbaijan, so maybe someday I'll have to watch one of their movies, or more than one. In Costa Rica, it is Our Lady of the Angels Day. In Russia, it is Paratroopers Day. In North Macedonia, it is Republic Day. In the Council of Europe and the European Parliament, it is Romani genocide-related observances, including these three, Roma Holocaust Memorial Day, uh, Genocide Remembrance Day of the Roma and Sinti, that one's in Poland. Um, and in the Ukraine, International Remembrance Day of the Holocaust of the Roma. And let's check this page for anything different. Wow, Canada. Canada, you're bringing it. You got a lot. Um, in America, first, it is National Coloring Book Day. We have some coloring books I should color in the book. It's These are probably in the fun holiday list. It's National Ice Cream Sandwich Day. Yeah, uh, don't drip your ice cream sandwich on your coloring book. In Canada, it is Civic Holiday, Heritage Day, Natal Day, Ice Cream Sandwich Day, New Brunswick Day, Saskatchewan Day, Simcoe Day. Yeah. In the UK, it is Summer Bank Holiday. In Ireland, it is August Bank Holiday. In Costa Rica, it is Our Lady of Los Angeles. 
in uh, Australia, it is picnic day. In Bolivia, it is indigenous day. In Bolivia, it is day of the farmer. In Colombia, it is flower festival. And let us look at the fu more fun holidays. I put fun in quotes. It is assistance dog day. I wish I had something. No, I don't. I just want a dog to give me assistance so I can have a dog. Um, but if I had a condition, I would definitely get an assistance dog. It is Dinosaurs Day. Woohoo, dinosaurs. It is National CAD Day. That is CAD. Computer Aided Design, Computer Assisted Design. Uh, yes, go celebrate your CAD designers. My brother in law is a CAD designer. National Coloring Book Day, National Ice Cream Sandwich Day, and I think that might be it. Let's check this one. Uh, those are all in Canada. We already read those. Terry Fox Day, Northern Territory Picnic Day. I think that's in Australia. Yep, I think we did it all. We finished everything for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Uh, how do you say? Adieu. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I am so pleased that you are here. I hope that you are telling everybody about it, because how are people going to know if you don't tell people about it? I'm just talking to nothing. That's what I'm doing anyway. The first word... Oh, I have to say happy birthday to my grandpa. My grandpa is turning... Now I have to do some math. 96 today. 96 a month ago, almost exactly a month ago, we celebrated my other grandpa's birthday, which at the time of recording is tomorrow. I will be seeing probably both of them tomorrow because they live in the same nursing home, which is a coincidence. Um, but yes, the one of them, the younger one, the younger one, he's such a young lad. Uh, he is 94. And then the older one is 96. Man, I can't believe it. Um, all right. So... The first word in this episode is clay bank. Two words. I mean, it's one word, but it's the two words, clay bank. Uh, but one word. Noun from 1851. A horse of yellowish color. Why, it is a, why is it called clay bank? I don't think of clay as a yellowish color. That's a horse of a different color. Next is clay court. Two words. Noun from 1885. A tennis court with a clay surface or a synthetic surface that resembles clay. Next is clay feet. Two words, noun from 1862. It's already plural. Otherwise, you'd say clay foot. Uh, the synonym is just feet of clay, which I guess we will be reading in the Fs. Feet of clay. What is that? Uh, next is clay loam. Two words. Loam is L-O-A-M. It's like, I'm going to give you, I'm going to loan you some money, but it's with an M, not an N. Noun from circa 1889. A loam containing from 20 to 30% clay. I don't know what a loam is. I feel like I should. Next is claymation with a capital C. Claymation. This is a service mark. It is used for animation that features images of clay figures. And uh, a lot of people just use that word for all stop motion animation. They don't, I mean, I, I get a little picky about it because I've been in the stop motion world in some form for most of my life. I've studied it and I've done it. And um, But claymation is specifically when it's only clay and it uh, has the ability to be changed and moved while on film. Uh, you know, uh, for instance, the Nightmare Before Christmas, while possibly they were made from clay originally, the, the actual puppets were not made of clay, and they didn't, uh, they didn't morph or change or move uh, in the film. Uh, so that would not be considered claymation. Uh, but good claymation, I mean, you look at that. I guess technically, technically Wallace and Gromit, because they're made of clay, although I think in, in the UK they have a different word, polyurth, poly, poly something. Um, but they also don't, like, they do sort of like morph and stretch a bit. Um, but there are other examples. I think uh, Will Tippett, he may have been the one who did like the California Raisins and some other stuff. He was, I think, big in claymation. In fact, he may have coined the, the this, this service mark, claymation. 
Um, and so, yeah, their stuff would was great. Maybe I should post a picture of some claymation. Uh, there was also a video game uh, that I really loved. It was a very silly game, but it was called Trog, T-R-O-G. And I would really love to find an actual old arcade game and buy it and put it in the place that I have no place to put it. I'll have to store it somewhere. But it was like... Uh, it, it basically it was claymation, but on the side of the machine it said playmation. Ooh, you're playing it. You're playing with claymation. Um, although, and they probably also didn't have the rights to use the word claymation, but that was a fun game. Moving on to clay mineral. Two words, noun from eighteen, no, nineteen thirty-seven. Any of a group of hydrous silicates of aluminum and sometimes other metals formed chiefly in weathering processes and occurring especially in clay and shale. Next is claymore. Give me more of that clay. I need more clay. This is one word, noun from 1527. A large two-edged sword formerly used by Scottish Highlanders. And then also their basket-hilted broadsword. Never heard of a claymore because I don't know anything about swords. This is from Scottish Gaelic Clydmeach. I don't know how to say these, these words. Clydmeach. Uh, oh, Clydmeach more. So the first word is C-L-A-I-D-H-E-A-M-H. And then the second word is M-O-R with an accent on the O. And this, this literally means great sword. Which word means great and which word means sore does more mean sword uh i'm not sure if i can figure this out but it is a great sword next is claymore mine two words it's the same word claymore but i don't know if it's related to swords and then mine like either a mine that you go digging in or a mine that blows up let's find out noun from 1961 a usually electric electrically fired landmine there we go containing steel fragments that are discharged in a predetermined direction. Why is it called claymore, though? Is it made from clay? Hmm. Next is clay pan. One word, noun from 1837. One, hard pan, consisting mainly of clay. Two, is Australian. A shallow depression in which water collects after rain. Next is clay pigeon, two words, noun from 1888, a saucer-shaped target, usually made of baked clay or limestone and pitch, and thrown from a trap in skeet and trap shooting. So I think pitch was the other thing. So clay or limestone and pitch, that's what it's made from, and that is thrown from a trap in skeet and trap shooting. My first, probably my first experience with this in any form was the game uh, Duck Hunt on the old Nintendo, Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES. Uh, there was another, you, you could shoot the ducks or you could shoot the clay pigeons. And then, of course, you've seen it countless times in movies and TV shows, and I've never done this in person, and I don't think I ever will, and it seems really hard. Next is Clayware. One word, clay, W-A-R-E. Noun from 1896, Articles made of fired clay. Next is an abbreviation, CLD. CLD. It is an abbreviation for called or cleared. Which one? Both of them. And we are actually on our last word. It is the word clean, C L E A N. A thing that we all like to be usually, and we like our place to be clean. Uh, this is the first form. The second, third, and fourth forms will be in the next episode. There are so many definitions for this one word. Clean. It is an adjective from before the 12th century. 1A. Free from dirt or pollution. As in, changed to clean clothes. I should probably do that. Also as in, clean solar energy. 1B. Free from contamination or disease, as in a clean wound. That little robot in Wally, I think his name was Mo. Mo. Uh, he loved everything to be clean. He would clean, clean, clean. Uh, now we are on 1C. 
free or relatively free from radioactivity, as in a clean atomic explosion. 2A, synonyms are unadulterated and pure, as in the clean thrill of one's first flight. 2B is talking about a precious stone, having no interior flaws visible. You want that stone to be clean. 2C, free from growth that hinders tillage, T-I-L-L-A-G-E, as in clean farmland. 3A, free from moral corruption or sinister connections of any kind, as in a candidate with a clean record. And then also, free from violations, as in a clean driving record. There are so few people who have a clean driving record. 3B, free from offense treatment. No, I said that wrong. Free from offensive treatment of sexual subjects and from the use of obscenity, as in a clean joke. There is no sexual subjects or obscenity or adult humor in that joke. It is a clean joke. Do I know any clean jokes? Yes, I do. Uh, 3C, observing the rules. The synonym is fair, as in a clean fight. 4. Ceremonially or spiritually pure, as in, and all who are clean may eat flesh. That is from the Bible, Leviticus 7.19, and then it says RSV, and I don't know what that is. So the quote again is, where did it go? Uh, and all who are clean may eat flesh. Um, you, you can do, uh, just, yeah, we're just going to move on. 5A. Synonyms are thorough and complete, as in a clean break with the past. Sometimes you need that. 5B, deftly executed. Synonym is skillful, as in clean ballet technique. 5C, hit beyond the reach of an opponent, as in a clean single to center. That is in baseball. 6A, relatively free from error or blemish, and the synonym is clear, so clean and clear, and then specifically the synonym legible, as in clean copy. Uh, you could probably also talk about your handwriting. Is it relatively free from error or blemish? Is it clear, legible? Uh, okay, 6B is next. The synonym is unencumbered, as in clean bill of sale. 7A, Characterized by clarity and precision. Synonym is trim, as in a clean prose style. Also as in architecture with clean, almost austere lines. 7B synonyms are even and smooth, as in a clean edge. Also as in a sharp blow causing a clean break. That's probably like could be a break in a bone, could be something else, but usually it would be a bone, a clean break. I think you want a clean break, so it's more easily fixed. If you don't have a clean break, it's very hard to fix a break, broken bone. 7C, free from impedances of, nope, free from impedances to smooth flow as of water or air, as in a clean airplane, also as in a ship with a clean bottom. 8A, synonym is empty, as in, the ship returned with a clean hold. There's nothing in it, it's clean. 8B, free from drug addiction, as in, as in has been clean for six months. Good for them, let's try for a year. 8C is slang, having no contraband as weapons or drugs in one's possession. Having no contraband in one's possession. They're clean. And number nine, habitually neat. Very clean. Uh, the synonym is cleanness. No, that's not a synonym. It's another form. Cleanness is a noun. Uh, our, our place, our condo is habitually clean. It's always clean. We're always cleaning it up, and it's very nice. Uh, the etymology is from Middle English. Clean, spelled C-L-E-N-E, -E, 
from Old English klein, akin to the Old High German kleinai, which means delicate or dainty. And that's all the etymology. So the words today were clay bank, clay court, clay feet, clay loam, claymation, clay mineral, claymore, claymore mine, clay pan, clay pigeon, clayware, CLD, and clean. Well, I think my wife would like me to pick clean as the word of the episode, but me being me, I have to pick claymation as the word of the episode. Claymation, claymation, you make some clay and you make it move and then you make it mation. What are the holidays? For today, August 3rd, uh, in Guinea-Bissau, it is the anniversary of the killing of Pijijuiti. In Equatorial Guinea, it is Armed Forces Day. In Venezuela, it is Flag Day. In, uh, let's see, it's Independence Day in Niger. It's also Arbor Day, I guess. That's related to Independence Day. In Venezuela, it is National Guard Day. Now, why does this say 2018? Oh, I think that's the year. International Beer Day uh, in 2018. But we're in 2021. Why would you be telling me in tw- three years ago it was International Beer Day? We already know that this this time of year is International Beer Day time. Uh, let's see. Let's check this page for some fun holidays. It is Airplane Crop Duster Day. The crops, they got to be dusted, I guess. This is a good one. It is Black Women's Equal Pay Day. So... We, we know that women don't get paid as the same as men. I, it seems like it's slowly changing, but I'm not even sure if we've made it there yet. Um, but do black women get paid even less? Why? Why? Why is this a thing? So, yes, we need this equal pay day. Clean your floors day. That's very appropriate for today because we just read the word clean. Clean them floors on August 3rd. It is Esther day. Who is Esther? What is this? Uh, let's see, Esther Day celebrated each year on Esther Grace Earl's birthday. She passed away in August, shortly after her 16th birthday. What? Lengthy battle of thyroid cancer. She was, uh, nerd fighter, vlog brothers. I'm not sure who she was, but, uh, yeah. So she was important enough to celebrate Esther Day. Also on today, Grab Some Nuts Day like peanuts uh national night out national night out it is national watermelon day it's summer i love watermelon it's so tasty um all right well let's just quickly check this other page national white wine day why was that not not on why was that not on the other page and tom's brady's tom brady's birthday happy birthday tom brady i guess We're going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another riveting episode of this podcast called The Dictionary. We are at the last section of page 229. If you would be so kind, I would love it if you wrote a review on Apple Podcasts and other places. Also, please just go tell other people about it. Go ahead and subscribe to this. Uh, you can send me an email dictionarypod at gmail.com if you have any comments questions whatever you want to say that is fine I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at dictionarypod I post pictures most days and comment funny sort of kind of things all right let's talk about the words the first word is the second form of the word clean if you don't know about the first form go to the last episode This one is an adverb from before the 12th century, 1a, so as to clean, as in, a new broom sweeps clean. You you gotta have a new broom every once in a while, sometimes they get messed up and you need to replace them. 1b, in a clean manner, as in, play play the game clean, play the game clean, that's like boxing. Uh, Number two. All the way, synonym is completely, as in, the bullet went clean through his arm. I think that's better than have it getting stuck in your arm, because that would not be good. Uh, Third form of clean is a verb from the 15th century, 
Um, it is, I think, both inter intransitive and transitive. Why is there there's some extra stuff in here? Yes, here we go. Okay, starting with transitive. It was hard to figure out what was going on. 1A, to make clean. As 1A1, to rid of dirt, impurities, or extraneous matter. 1A2, to rid of corruption. As in, vowing to clean up City Hall. I, th I feel like we saw another cleaning up City Hall thing not that long ago. Uh, let's see. 1B, the synonyms are remove and eradicate. And that is usually used with uh, the words up or off. Clean up, clean off. As in, clean up that mess. Yes, if you make a mess, you gotta go clean it up. I have to remind myself about that all the time. 2A, synonyms are strip and empty. As in, a tree cleaned of fruit. Somebody has taken away all of the tree's fruit and it has been stripped clean. 2B, to remove the entrails from. Mmm, sounds fun. As in, clean fish. To see, to deprive of money or possessions. And this is often used with the word out. As in, they cleaned him out completely. Now we have intransitive. To undergo or perform a process of cleaning. As in, clean up before dinner. You gotta go take a shower. You gotta... Hose down before you can have dinner. Um, so let's see. So clean ability is a noun. That is the how the ability of something to be clean. The clean it's cleanable. Oh, cleanable is is an adjective. Um, but now we have some phrases. Clean house number one to clean a house and its furniture. We just did a lot of that right now, right before I was recording. Did some vacuuming. That happens all the time in this place. Some washing the dishes. Got to do that all the time. Got a clean house. Uh, number two, to make sweeping reforms or changes. And the example would be as of personnel. Got a clean house. Get rid of those, those peoples and bring in some other peoples. Another phrase, clean one's clock. And that means to beat one badly in a fight or competition. They got clocked. They cleaned one's clocked. Um, that maybe not was a clean fight. And then the last phrase is clean up one's act. And that means to behave in a more acceptable manner. What is acceptable? That's very subjective. You got to clean your act. Clean up your act. I don't want to clean up my act. Fourth form of clean. It's the last form of clean. It is a noun from circa 1889. An act of cleaning dirt, especially from the surface of something. Next is clean and jerk. Three words, noun from 1913. A lift in weightlifting in which the weight is raised to shoulder height, held momentarily, and then quickly thrust overhead, usually with a lunge or a spring from the legs. And then it says compare to the synonyms press and snatch. Those are all types of lifts in weightlifting. Uh, clean and jerk with hyphens is a verb. So the noun has no hyphens and the verb has hyphens. Next is clean cut. Two words with a hyphen. Adjective from 1843. One, cut so that the surface or edge is smooth and even. Two, sharply defined. Three, of wholesome appearance. Again, that's very subjective. I guess. I'm thinking of your haircut. If you're clean cut, that means you've got a wholesome appearance, but that doesn't mean if you're not clean cut that you are not a wholesome person. It's just the, the visual, the outward appearance. Okay, next is cleaner. Noun from 1721A, one whose work is cleaning. Thank you, cleaners. If you are a cleaner in some sort of building, hotel, whatever it is, uh, you you are much appreciated and you don't get enough respect, so I am publicly thanking all the cleaners out there. 1B synonyms are is just the one word, dry cleaner. It's the one synonym, two words. But then also a dry cleaning shop, and that is usually used in plural. So I gotta take my clothes to the cleaners. 2. A preparation for cleaning. 3. An implement or machine for cleaning. It is the cleaner. The thing that does the cleaning. Could be a person, could be a machine. 
Next is clean-handed. One word. Some people are right-handed, some people are left-handed, and some people are clean-handed. No. Adjective from 1728. Innocent of wrongdoing. They're clean. They did nothing wrong. So you can catch somebody red-handed, and that would be the opposite of clean-handed. Next is clean-limbed. Two words with a hyphen. Limbed. It's like your leg is a limb. Your arm is a limb. Clean-limbed. Adjective from the 15th century. Well-proportioned. And the synonym is trim, as in clean-limbed youths. This is very strange to me. Well-proportioned? If you are well-proportioned, you are clean-limbed. Who, where, why, who, who used this? What context was this used in? And does it still get used? Somehow I think not. But if you know a context for this, let me know. Next is the first form of cleanly. It's an adverb from the 13th century, and it just means in a clean manner. Second form of cleanly, adjective from circa 1500. One, careful to keep clean. Synonym is fastidious. Two, habitually kept clean. Uh, yeah, we, we are habitually keeping this place clean because my wife is very clean and she likes things clean. And I, I understand that. Uh, cleanliness is a, is a noun. But so that word is weird because, oh, I see what's going on here. So this second form of cleanly is actually cleanly. I said it wrong. I pronounced it wrong. The first form is cleanly. Second form, cleanly. Careful to keep clean, fastidious, habitually kept clean. And then cleanliness is a noun. Why is it cleanly and not cleanly? I don't know. How did that happen? All right, next is clean room. Two words. Clean room, noun from 1963. A room for the manufacture or assembly of objects that is maintained at a high level of cleanliness by special means. Uh, and the example of the objects would be precision parts. You got to keep it very clean so the parts can be precisioned. Uh, that's the clean room. Next is cleanse. C-L-E-A-N-S-E. -E. Verb from before the 12th century. Uh, the synonym is just clean, especially to rid of impurities by or as if by washing. Um, let's see, this is from the Old English cleansian, which means to purify from clean, which means clean. And uh, a lot of people these days, they say that they're going through a cleanse. They are eating different foods or not eating foods or eating or drinking these things or not drinking thing these things, and they are trying to cleanse their body. Uh, I think I've heard that it's not entirely possible to do that, uh, at least not in the way that people think. But, you know, I think to a certain extent, uh, there, is, there is some truth to cleansing your system. Obviously, if you start eating healthier, you're going to eventually cleanse your system of the bad stuff that's in there. I encourage you all to do that. Next is cleanser. Cleanser, noun from before the 12th century. Uh, one, one that cleanses. Two, a preparation as a scouring powder or a skin cream used for cleaning. It's a cleanser. Next is clean up. This is all one word, first form, Noun from 1872, one, an act or instance of cleaning. Two, an exceptionally large profit. Synonym is killing. Yeah, you make a lot of money, you made a killing, you cleaned up. Uh, second form of clean up, adjective from 1937, being in the fourth position in the batting order of a baseball team, as in a clean up hitter. And then clean up in this context is also an adverb. So why, if you don't know baseball, why is this person uh, the cleanup hitter? So um, this is a typically a person who is a very, very good hitter, very strong hitter, can has a better chance of hitting a home run than uh, other people. And so the idea is that the first three people, they're good enough to possibly get singles. And so if all three of them got singles, then the bases would be loaded and then the cleanup person would come in and hopefully hit a home run and get a grand slam. So all four people come in. That is a cleanup hitter. And our last word is also clean up, but it is two words. 
Uh, this is a verb just intransitive from 1920 to make a spectacular profit in a business enterprise or a killing in speculation or gambling. Making lots of money. So, the words were clean, clean and jerk, clean cut, cleaner, clean handed, clean limbed, cleanly, cleanly, clean room, cleanse, cleanser, clean up, and clean up. Uh, what, what should I pick? I mean, obviously we like things that are clean. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. I definitely found clean limbed to be odd. Um, let's pick, oh, yeah, I don't know what to pick. Let's pick clean room as the word of the episode. It's a very special room in a building where everything has got to be super, super clean. I don't know why I want to pick that one. I just did clean room. Clean room, make all the stuff in this room clean. All right, let's talk about the holidays. In the U.S., it is Coast Guard Day. I think I said that weird. Coast Guard Day. The first Monday in August is uh, the, is Constitution Day in the Cook Islands. In Slovakia, it is Matika Slovenska Day. In Burkina Faso, it is Revolution Day. Um, let's see. In the UK, it is Play Day. In Chile, it is National Architect Day. In Colombia, it is National Journalist Day. And what are, what are on this, this, what's, what's on this page for fun holidays? Hooray for Kids Day. National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Yeah. National Psychiatric Technician Appreciation Day. We do. We have, we have some very specific holidays, and that is fine. We, we, don't, we don't give enough respect to the psychiatric technicians. National White Wine Day. Any white wine, there's a lot of them, you can have it. Single Working Women's Day. A lot of women are single, and they work. And they gotta work, because they have to pay their bills. Uh, yes, U.S. Coast Guard Day. And any other fun holidays that we missed? There's at least one. Uh, no, there's a couple. Regatta Day. And, uh, well, it's also, as we said, U.S. Coast Guard Day. It's the birthday. So, uh, you know, maybe if there's an accident during a regatta, the Coast Guard has got to go do some work. Uh, but then finally, it is Barack Obama's birthday. Happy birthday, Obama. If you would like to be on this podcast sometime, um, you know, in the next, like, 14 years on August 4th, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. I can, I can make some room for you. All right, we're going to end this episode there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I was hoping to have a guest on this episode. Um, I I could have tried harder. I did try multiple times. Uh, and so, you know, at the time of recording, it's still possible that it could happen. And then I will delete all of this. Uh, but more than likely... This is what you will be hearing. Hello, how are you? Uh, okay, so we are technically at the very bottom of page 229. We got a pretty good chunk of text here. Um, and then we're going to move on to the top of page 230. Uh, we have one word in this episode. I think we are doing all four forms of the word clear. All right, so let's see. The first, the first word... <laughs> It's the same word. It's the word clear. Uh, first form, adjective from the 13th century, 1A. Synonyms are bright and luminous. 1B, synonym is cloudless. Specifically, oh, okay, less than one-tenth covered. So I, I'm guessing that if, if, you, if the sky is covered in less than one-tenth of clouds... If, if less than one-tenth of the sky is covered in clouds, 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 clouds uh, that means that it is cloudless, technically. But there's still some clouds. I wouldn't call that cloudless. As in, a clear day. 1C, free from mist, haze, or dust. As in, a clear day. 1D, synonyms are un untroubled and serene. As in, a clear gaze. Two synonyms are clean and pure, as 2A, free from blemishes, as in clear skin. 
uh, you know, we don't all have clear skin. I'm in my 40s now, and I still, uh, you know, get some things that happen. And so, but, you know, it does uh, lessen, typically, as time goes on. 2B, easily seen through. The synonym is transparent, as in clear glass. 2C, free from abnormal sounds on auscultation. 3A, easily heard, as in a loud and clear sound. Am I being clear? Two, uh, no, 3B, easily visible. Synonym is plain, P-L-A-I-N, as in a clear signal. 3C, free from obscurity or ambiguity. Also easily understood. Synonym is unmistakable, as in a clear explanation. Whenever I need to explain something, I really, really, really try to be clear about it. So there's no confusion. Uh, I guess this is probably a good point to mention the guest that I wanted to have on this guest, this episode, is Alan Alda, because he has a podcast, which I have mentioned before, called Clear and Vivid. Clear, that's the word we're talking about today. Um, It's a very good podcast. Uh, There's actually two versions. There's a regular version where he talks about or he talks with um, interesting people from various walks of life, uh, usually who are famous in some way, who have done something. And, uh, you know, it's they talk about communication. That's kind of a big, big thing about it. There's a lot of science involved. And then there's clear and vivid science, which he only talks to scientists about their work and how they got interested in whatever they're doing and, and all that. It's super fascinating. But at the end of each of the regular version uh, episodes, not the science ones, but the other ones, at the end, he says, this has been clear and vivid. At least I hope so. Because the whole thing is about, you know, we want to be clear and vivid in our communication and other things related to that. Uh, And so, you know, he hopes that it's clear and vivid. um, And it is. I think it is. Anyway, we're going to move on to 4A. Capable of sharp discernment. Synonym is keen, as in a clear thinker. 4B. Free from doubt. Synonym is sure, as in not clear on how to proceed. Five, free from guile or guilt. And I have to flip the page. Uh, Synonym is innocent, as in a clear conscience. Six, unhampered by restriction or limitation, as 6A, unencumbered by debts or charges, as in a clear estate. 6B, the synonym is net, as in a clear profit. 6C, synonyms are unqualified and absolute, as in a clear victory. 6D, free from obstruction, as in clear passage. 6E, emptied of contents or cargo. 6F, wow, free from entanglement or contact, as in staying clear of controversy. That's what I try to do. Also as in Keep clear of the boundary. And then finally, 6G. Synonyms are bare, B-A-R-E, and denuded. Denuded. So bare, I would assume, means nude. And then denuded, I feel like that would be the opposite, but maybe not. I don't know. And then there's the example, clear ground. Clearness is a noun. We have synonym information for this first form of clear. Clear, transparent, translucent, and limpid, L-I-M-P-I-D, mean capable of being seen through. Clear implies absence of cloudiness, haziness, or muddiness, as in clear water. Transparent implies being so clear that objects can be seen distinctly, as in a transparent sheet of film. Translucent implies the passage of light, but not a clear view of what lies beyond, as in translucent frosted glass. And limpid, and I I don't think I've heard this word, so this is new to me, limpid uh, suggests the soft clearness of pure water, as in her eyes were limpid pools of blue. 
hey, guess what? We have more synonym information for a different version of clear, a different uh, definition. Clear, perspicuous, perspicuous and lucid mean quickly and easily understood. Clear implies freedom from obscurity, ambiguity, or undue complexity, as in clear instructions. Per, how do you say this word again? Perspicuous applies to a style that is simple and elegant as well as clear, as in a perspicuous style. Lucid suggests a clear logical coherence and evident order of arrangement, as in a lucid explanation. And then finally, synonym, another synonym in addition is the word evident. Now we are moving on to the second form of clear adverb from the 14th century. This one's short. One, in a clear manner, as in to cry loud and clear. Two, all the way, as in drove clear across the state. I don't know if you can hear this, but there is a cat trying to get into this room. And she just paws on the door. And this happens when I'm recording Oh, no, actually, she wants to get out. I didn't even know she was in here. She was hiding behind the side table. All right, Audrey, you're just going to have to hang out until I'm done with this episode. The people need to hear the word clear. All right, so that was the second form. Now we're on the third form. It is a verb from the 14th century. There is a bunch, and I believe it is both transitive and intransitive. Yes, we are starting with transitive. 1A, to make clear or translucent. 1B, to free from pollution or cloudiness. 2, to free from accusation or blame. Uh, The synonym is exonerate. There's another one, vindicate, as in the opportunity to clear himself. 3A, to give insight to. Synonym is enlighten. 3B, to make intelligible. Synonym is explain, as in clear up the mystery. 4a, to free from what obstructs or is unneeded. As 4a1, the synonym is the 1b definition for the word open, as in clear a path. 4a2, to remove unwanted growth or items from, as in clear the land of timber. 4a3, there's a bunch, to rid to rid or make a raspy noise as if ridding of phlegm. And the example would be the throat. Ridding the throat of phlegm. <clears throat> uh, for A4, to erase stored or displayed data from. Uh, the example is a computer or calculator. Clear it. Uh, for B, to empty of occupants, as in clear the room. For C, the synonym is disentangle, as in clear a fishing line. 4D, to remove from an area or place, as in clear the dishes from the table. Audrey, I know you want to get out of this room, but I'm stuck here with a book on my lap and a microphone in my face and I can't help you out right now. But why don't you come over here and sit at my feet and listen to me teach you things about the word clear? We'll see if she listens. 4E synonyms are transmit and dispatch. 5A, to submit for approval, as in clear it with me first. 5B synonyms are authorize and approve, as in cleared the article for publication. As 5B1, to certify as, to certify as trustworthy, as in Clear a person for classified information. I want some classified information. 5B2. To permit to proceed usually with a specified action. And the example would be an aircraft. You're permitting the aircraft to proceed. Uh, As in, the plane was cleared to land. 6A. To free from obligation or encumbrance. 6B. Synonyms are settle and discharge, as in clear an account. 6C1, to free by payment of duties or harbor fees. Uh, And the example of what you are freeing is a ship or shipment. 
6C2 to pass through, and you are passing through possibly customs. 6D to gain without deduction, synonym is net, as in clear a profit. 6E to put through a clearing house. 7A to go over, under, or by without touching, as in the ball just cleared the uprights. Uh, I guess you could. Now nah, that wouldn't work. Uh, 7B to move through successfully. Synonym is pass, as in the bill cleared the legislature. And now we are on intransitive, and then we got some phrases. So 1A for intransitive, to become clear, as in it cleared up quickly. Uh, oh, cleared up quickly after the rain. 1B. To go away, synonym is vanish, as in the symptoms cleared gradually. 1C, the synonym is sell, like buying and selling. 2A, to obtain permission to discharge cargo. 2B, to conform to regulations or pay requisite fees prior to leaving port. To conform to regulations or pay requisite fees prior to leaving port. 3 to pass through a clearing house. Four, to go to an authority, as for approval, before becoming effective. Uh, Clearable is an adjective, clearer is a noun, and phrase time. Clear the air or clear the atmosphere means to remove elements of hostility, tension, confusion, or uncertainty, as in had a long meeting to clear the air. And then clear the decks means to make sweeping preparations for action. Um, Okay, so we now have the fourth form of the word clear. And I think I forgot to check the first one for the etymology. Uh, The first form says it is from the Latin clarus, which means clear or bright, akin to calare, calare, which means to call. And there's more at the word low. So here we go with the fourth form of clear, noun from 1674. One, a clear space or part. Two, a high arcing shot over an opponent's head in badminton. In the clear means one, two, uh, no, one, an inside measurement. Two, free from guilt or suspicion. And three, in plain text. And also, not in code or cipher. So I think that has to do with coding, probably. As in, a message sent in the clear. So the words today were clear. Clear. This is so clear. I don't know what that means. It's clear. All right, let's talk about the holidays. Oh, you know what? I didn't update my pages. Uh, Let's do that real quick and cut this out. All right, let's talk about the holidays. What is today? It is August 5th. Um, Burkina Faso is celebrating Independence Day. Croatia has Victory and Homeland Thanksgiving Day and the Day of Croatian Defenders. Uh, Anything else extra on this page? In the U.S. and Canada, it is IPA Day. I am guessing that is the beer. What else? More fun holidays. Cycle to Work Day in the UK. Green Peppers Day. Oh, my dad hates green peppers. I'll have to tell him to avoid this day. International Traffic Light Day. What are you supposed to do on International Traffic Light Day? Uh, National Oyster Day. National Underwear Day. So, wear underwear or maybe don't wear underwear. It is also Work Like a Dog Day. I think that's every day for me. Any other fun holidays that I missed? Nope, I don't think so. I think that has been everything that I have said. Yep, that is how you end an episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I have skipped the the previous episode. I skipped it. It's the first section of page 230. I am hoping... I I should probably put some effort into making this happen, Uh, but I'm hoping to have a guest on that episode. So, if you are listening to these in order, 
uh, you will know if there was a guest or not. Uh, future me will know, future you will know, but present me has no idea. So we're going to see what happens. Um, and I think this will be a bit of a shorter episode, uh, just because of the way that the words are falling on the page. All right. So the first word in this episode is clear air turbulence. Clear air is two words with a hyphen, and then the word turbulence. Noun from 1955, sudden severe turbulence occurring in cloudless regions that causes violent jarring or buffeting of aircraft. So what causes this? You know, usually there's uh, turbulence because you're going through clouds, you're going through something, but is it is it the difference between high pressure systems and low pressure systems? I don't know enough about meteorology to know these things or understand these things, but it happens and uh, probably happens a lot. But usually they can tell when turbulence is coming. Uh, I don't know. I think turbulence is kind of fun, actually. <laughs> not not the bad, bad turbulence, but a little bit is kind of fun. Um, all right, next is clearance. Noun from 1540. One, an act or process of clearing. As 1A, the removal of buildings from an area. As a city slum. 1B, the act of clearing a ship at the custom house. And then also, the papers showing that a ship has cleared. 1C, the offsetting of checks and other claims among banks through a clearing house. 1D, certification as clear of objection. Certification as clear of objection. Synonym is authorization, as in security clearance. I have no security clearance. 1E, a sale to clear out stock. 1F, authorization for an aircraft to proceed especially with a specified action, as in clearance to land. Maybe that plane went through some clear air turbulence. Number two, the distance by which one object clears another or the clear space between them. Three, the volume of blood or plasma that can be freed of a specified constituent in a specified time by its excretion into the urine through the kidneys, as in a creatine clearance of 25 milliliters per minute. And that's also called renal clearance. Sharon, did you learn about renal clearance? She's nodding. All right, next we have clear cut. Two words with a hyphen. First form, adjective from 1849. One, sharply outlined. Synonym is distinct. Two, free from ambiguity, ambiguity or uncertainty. Synonym is unambiguous, as in a clear cut decision. I have such a hard time deciding on things. I never have clear cut decisions. Sometimes I have to flip a coin. Second form of clear cut, also with a hyphen, noun from circa 1958, an area of forest which has been clear cut. Also the synonym clear cutting with an ing. Uh, that is actually our next word. Noun from 1922, removal of all the trees in a stand of timber. And then clear cut is a verb. That's with a hyphen. Um, I know that there, uh, for, for fire purposes, for regrowth purposes, it makes sense to do some clear cutting, although that may not be the right term. Uh, they need to clear the brush. They need to, uh, or sometimes set fires just to, just to stimulate the growth. Um, but I think with over clearing, over cleaning, um, it, it has sort of messed things up and there needs to be some level of fire to to keep the natural cycles going correctly um and then but also like i'm not a big fan of just cutting down everything to make space for stupid stuff all right next is clear eyed two words with a hyphen adjective from 1530 the synonym is clear sighted with a hyphen as in a clear eyed assessment next is clear felling Two words with a hyphen, noun from 1922. It is chiefly British, and we have the synonym clear cutting. So when we're talking about the removal of the trees, the Brits say clear felling. The trees have been felled, 
and then the the the, 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 the them yanks i'm a yank we say clear cutting and then clear fell is a verb next is clear headed one word adjective from 1709 one having or showing a clear understanding and the synonym is perceptive as in clear headed comments two able to think clearly as in stay calm and clear headed it's very hard to do when you're in a stressful situation but you need to stay calm and clear headed i try uh, clear headedly is an adverb and clear headedness is a noun next is clearing clearing how do you want to say clearing clearing i'm i'm changing the end is it an n sound is it a g sound uh this is a noun from the 14th century one the act or process of making or becoming clear two a tract of land cleared of wood and brush three the settlement of accounts or exchange of financial instruments especially between banks Speaking of banks, I think, possibly, next is Clearing House. Noun from 1792, one, an establishment maintained by banks for settling mutual claims and accounts. Two, a central agency for the collection, classification, and distribution, especially of information. And then broadly, an informal channel for distrib... Distrib... I can't say this word. An informal channel for distributing distributing i found it for distributing information or assistance sometimes words are hard uh let's see and let's see next is clearly adverb from the 14th century one in a clear manner sin uh no example speaking clearly i try sometimes i don't but i try uh number two it is clear that is the definition for clearly it is clear as in, clearly, a new approach is needed. What was the old approach? Let's figure out a new approach. Um, and then it says, for usage, see the synonym hopefully. Okay, hopefully, clearly. All right, moving on to clear off. Two words. Intransitive verb from 1722, chiefly British. To go away. Synonym is depart. We are clearing off next is clear out two words intransitive well it's just a verb from 1792 the intransitive definition is just the synonym depart clear out and then transitive says to drive out or away usually forcibly you have been forced out they're clearing you out next is clear sighted uh is this related to clear eyed yes this is an adjective from 1586. One, having clear vision. Two, synonym is discerning, as in a clear-sighted appraisal. Clear-sightedly is an adverb, and clear-sightedness is a noun. Next is clear story. One word, variation of clear story, spelled C-L-E-R-E, -E, story, also one word, which I think we'll see in two episodes. And our last word for this episode is clear wing, all one word. Noun from 1867, a moth having the wings largely transparent and devoid of scales. Well, I obviously I'll have to post a picture because I think it's very cool when these flying critters have clear wings. Um, the examples uh, would be the families Aigeridae or Svingidae. I don't know how to pronounce those words. So, the words in this episode were clear air turbulence, clearance, clear cut, clear cutting, clear eyed, clear felling, clear headed, clearing, clearing house, clearly, clear off, clear out, clear sighted, clear story, and clear wing. Is it just me, or does clear sound very strange? I say that a lot, but it's true. You know, there's like so many words that start with the same thing, and then they just sound weird. So, which one do I want to pick as the word of the episode? I like some turbulence. Um, let's let's pick clear-headed as the word of the episode. Because sometimes it's very hard to be clear-headed. 
Sometimes it's very hard to be clear-headed, but you should try. All right, let's talk about the holidays. What are we on? August 6th. August 6th. Um, the This page says, in the United Arab Emirates, it is Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nayan's Ascension Ascent, Accessions Day. In Bolivia, Independence Day. Jamaica, Independence Day. Hiroshima, Japan, it is the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Ceremony. In Russia, Russian Railway Troops Day. This page says anything interesting. I think those are probably going to be on the fun holidays. In Australia, it is Jeans for Jeans Day. What is that? Jeans, G-E-N-E-S, for jeans, J-E-A-N-S. Something about DNA and blue jeans. It's also Hiroshima Day in India and Sweden. Um, Bolivia National Day in Bolivia. Fun holidays. It is Balloons to Heaven Day. But don't let balloons out in the air. That's not very good for the environment, for the animals. Just don't do it. It is Brahm Pie Day. It's some something something for with pies. It is Corporate Baby Name Day. What is that? Corporate Baby Name? You can find out more of these if you want to go look them up. Farm Worker Appreciation Day. We do appreciate our farm workers because they give us foods. Um, International Beer Day. There's lots and lots of kinds of beers from all over the world, so go try something new. National Fresh Breath Day. Make sure you brush your teeth. Floss. You gotta floss. It's not that hard. It's a quick thing. The dentists say to do it. Just do it. Just do it. It's easy. It's National Gossip Day. It's National Root Beer Float Day. Oh, those are so good. Wiggle Your Toes Day. Okay, I'll wiggle my toes just because you said so. By the way, I forgot days ago, days ago, it was a week, August 1st through 7th. It's International Assistance Dog Week. Thank you, assistance dogs and then anything else for today august 6th cycle to work day i think that's in the uk and that is good for that thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing all of the information in the world in the english language to you goodbye hello word nerds word word birds word other word that rhymes with words all right let's just talk about these words in this episode the first of them is cleat c-l-e-a-t this is the first form um it is a noun from the 14th century 1a a wedge-shaped piece fastened to or projecting from something and serving as a support or check 1b a wooden or metal fitting, usually with two projecting horns around which a rope may be made fast. So fast. 2A, a strip fastened across something to give strength or hold in position. 2B1, a projecting piece, as on the bottom of a shoe, that furnishes a grip. I think that's the one that most people are aware of. One, no, 2B2 is plural, Shoes, shoes equipped with cleats. Shoes that are equipped with cleats are called cleats. Uh, let's see, this is from Middle English cleat, C-L-E-T-E, which means wedge from Old English kleat, uh, akin to the Middle High German close, which means lump, and there's more at the word clout. Second form of cleat, this is a transitive verb from 1794, one to secure to or buy a cleat. Two, to provide with a cleat. Next is cleavable, something that is able to be cleaved. Adjective from circa 1846, capable of being split. Yeah, it would be confusing if you use the word cleave in the definition for cleavable. Capable of being split. Next is cleavage. Now, this has a number of definitions. I think most people think of the adult definition, which I'm sure is in here, uh, but most of them are not that. Uh, This is a noun from 1816. 1A, the quality 
of a crystallized substance or rock of splitting along definite planes. P uh, planes, P-L-A-N-E-S, like a, a surface. Not a flying plane. Not a plane of wheat. A different kind of plane. And then also, the occurrence of such splitting. 1B, a fragment obtained by splitting. And the example of this fragment would be in a diamond. 2. The action of cleaving, also the state of being cleft. 3. The series of synchronized mitotic cell divisions of a fertilized egg that results in the formation of the blastomeres and changes the single cell zygote into a multicellular embryo, also one of these cell divisions. It has been cleaved. 4. The splitting of a molecule into simpler molecules. And then five, the depression between a woman's breasts, especially when made visible by a low cut neckline. Next is cleave, first form. This is a verb, uh, it is just intransitive, from before the 12th century, to adhere firmly and closely or loyally and unwaveringly to adhere firmly and closely or loyally and unwaveringly okay and the synonym is the word stick uh let's see middle english clavian from old english cliffian akin to the old high german kleben which means to stick so i think this is interesting because when you think of something being cleaved you think of it being split into at least two parts um, not sticking together. So it's just interesting to me that there's uh, a version of this that's kind of the opposite of what we normally think. Uh, but here is the second form of cleave. It is a verb from before the 12th century. One, to divide by or as if by a cutting blow. And the synonym is split. Two, to separate into distinct parts and especially into groups having divergent views. Three, oh, by the way, we are starting with uh, transitive. These are all transitive. Uh, number three, to subject to chemical cleavage, uh, as in a protein cleaved by an enzyme. And intransitive, number one, to split, especially along the grain. I'm guessing that's wood. Two, to penetrate or pass through something by or as if by cutting. And then synonym is the word tear, T-E-A-R, not tear, tear. What does the etymology have to say for us and to us? Middle English, Clevin, from Old English, Cleophon, akin to the Old Norse, Kljufa? Kljufa. I think it's K-L-J-U-F-A. How do you say that? Klufa. That means to split from the Latin glubere, which means to peel, like peeling an orange, from the Greek glyphine, which means to carve. Good etymology. All right, next we have cleaver. Beaver, cleaver, what were the rest of the family members' names in that show? Leave it to beaver, I don't remember. Noun from the 15th century, one, one that cleaves, especially a butcher's implement for cutting animal carcasses into joints or pieces. Two, a prehistoric stone tool having a sharp edge at one end. Next is cleavers, noun from the 14th century. An annual bed straw, I don't know what that is, having many stalked white flowers and stems covered with curved prickles. Also, any of several related plants. So a bed straw is a plant. And the scientific name is Gallium aparine or aparine. The etymology says it's from Middle English, cleavre, alternative of Old English, cleif, C L I F E, which means burdock or cleavers, akin to the Old English, cliffian. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll post a picture of this. Why is it called cleavers? Is it split into pieces? It sounds like it might be. Next is cleek. C-L-E-E-K, noun from the 15th century. It is chiefly Scottish, and it means a large hook, and that would be for a pot over a fire. 
Uh, so there's you, you got a fire, and you want to put a pot over the fire, but you got to hold the pot on something. So you put it on a large hook, and the Scottish people call that hook a cleek. Uh, and it is from uh, Middle English, Northern Middle English, klecken, which means to clutch. Next is clef, C-L-E-F. Uh, this is a noun from circa 1577, a sign placed at the beginning of a musical staff to determine the pitch of the notes. And there are examples of these clefs. Um, let's see, just checking anything else. I think, we, okay, so yes, I shall describe these. Um, but a lot of you have probably seen these. There's two of them. Uh, number one is the treble clef. This is the one that most people are familiar with, even non-musical people. It looks sort of like a, um, uh, a cursive S. Uh, the line goes up, and then it curves around to the right, and then it goes back down, and it swirls around the bottom. And then the other one is the bass clef. Uh, musical people are familiar with both, both of these. The bass clef looks like a curly, fancy, backward C. And then there are two dots, like a colon, two dots to the right of it. So those are treble clef and bass clef, but there's a whole bunch of other ones. Um, I know that they're, I mean, I don't know. Honestly, I'm not as familiar with the other ones. I know that there's at least one other clef that, depending on the position of it, will determine the pitches. Um, and so the treble clef uh, the middle C is the line below the bottom line. There's, the you know, five lines. We've got uh, the, the spaces are, say, F-A-C-E, and the lines are E-G-B-D-E, I think. Um, but anyway, the line below the bottom line would be middle C, and then for the bass clef, the line above the top line is middle C. But then, depending on the instrument that you're playing, there's other clefs. I think I've spoken about that enough. Haven't I? Maybe I'll post a picture of what these look like. All right, and our last word is cleft, C-L-E-F-T, two forms. First form is a noun from the 14th century. One, a space or opening made by or as if by splitting. And the synonym is fissure, or fissure, fissure, I think, F-I-S-S-U-R-E. Number two, a usually V-shaped indented formation. A hollow between ridges or protuberances, as in, uh, I was not expecting this, as in the anal cleft of the human body. Was that, is that literally like the space between your butt cheeks? The V-shaped indented formation, hollow between, I mean, it's, or maybe the space above that? I don't know. It's the anal cleft. It's a thing. This is from Middle English, clift, from Old English, G-E-C-L-Y-F-T, Gecleft, akin to the Old English Cleophon, which means to cleave. And then the second form of cleft is an adjective from the 14th century, partially split or divided, and then specifically divided about halfway to the mid-rib, as in a cleft leaf. Uh, yeah, that's good for that. So the words today were cleat, Cleavable, cleavage, cleave, cleaver, cleavers, clique, clef, and cleft. Well, being a musical person, I am going to pick clef as the word of the episode. How do you sing a song about clef? You can sing a song about clef. Here we are in the treble clef, and now here we are in the bass clef. That doesn't make any sense, but it happened. All right, the, the the holidays, the holidays for today. What are we on? August 7th, I believe so. Yeah. All right, in Colombia, Battle of Boya, Boyasha Day, Boyasa, Boyaca Day. I don't know how to pronounce that word. In the Assyrian community, it is Assyrian Martyrs Day. In St. Kitts and Nevis, it is Emancipation Day. In Ethiopian and Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedo Church, it is Filseta. In the Ivory Coast, it is Republic Day. In Kiribati, it is Youth Day. Youth. Youth. Anything on this day? Uh, let's see. Descendo International del Sela. Sea. It is International Descent of Sea. Um, Bolivia National Armed Forces Day. What are some more fun 
holidays. We are on August 7th. It is Aged Care Employee Day in Australia. It is Beach Party Day. Oh, I would love to have a beach party. It is International Blues Music Day. Yeah, I gotta go listen to some blues music. It is Mead Day, M-E-A-D. That is an alcohol made from honey and other stuff. Ooh, it's National Disc Golf Day. It's probably a good day, good day to go play some disc golf. I've only done it a handful of times, but I, I very much enjoy it because I like Frisbee. It is National Jamaican Patty Day. It's a picture of these, looks like fried dough things with stuff inside, and that looks really tasty. It is National Lighthouse Day. I live close to a lighthouse, so maybe I'll go go say hi, lighthouse. And then it will say, hello, Spencer. Thanks for saying hi. Now I'm going to sit here and shine a light off into the distance. It's National Mustard Day. It's National Sea Serpent Day. It's Particularly Preposterous Packaging Day. I mean... There you go. It's Professional Speakers Day. I am not really a professional speaker, but I am speaking to you. It's Purple Heart Day. Lots of people have gotten purple hearts because they did something great. It is Raspberry and Cream Day. It's Taxpayer Appreciation Day. Don't you think every day should be Taxpayer, taxpayer Appreciation Day? We, we pay our taxes, so you better appreciate us. Anything else? I think that's good. We have done it. Woohoo! Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, which is tomorrow, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.